got us a walk-in freezer. It's got a couple icicles on it. What I noticed first off was it's actually defrosting fine, but the pan here has been completely tore apart. So we're going to go ahead and put it to a defrost and see if we can find out if it's something more than the pan just wasn't draining or what. And our heat tape does feel to be working. This thing stays kind of horizontal for a while. Time's correct. suction pressure. Somebody didn't know what a refrigeration wrench was. They completely rounded it out. Somebody's cracked the cap and they've completely jammed this thing completely up. So let's put her into a defrost again. Let's see if she pops down. That could be an issue. If the compressor's not shutting off, you definitely would have some frost on that side of the coil out the middle but not the end cap. We've only got three defrosts per 24. Let's take a closer look at this thing, see if we can get it adjusted a little bit. She's not pulling into a negative which is kind of concerning. Okay, so we adjusted our differential and uh, she did shut off. Let's take a peek at our electrical section. Terminal 3, which is feeding our heaters, is 10.75. Uh, Check our uh, 4, make sure it's dead. Yeah, it's dead, so that's good. So other than being in a negative, which is definitely not good, you don't want to be in the negative. If there's a leak, then uh, we're going to suck stuff into the system and that's not good so let's go downstairs take a look at the uh, elements make sure all the elements pan heater and all that's working you can't get into those wires and hack away at those we're set at a reasonable temperature there all right one thing i noticed was this was warm before we kicked it in defrost when it was in defrost, it was off. Maybe not a humongous thing. I'd prefer it to stay hot all the time. We're gonna get this pan and drop it. It kicked out on termination. Because the coil's clean. I mean, it's great. But what we got going on over here, I think was just the compressor kept running. There's not a lot of heat over here in this corner. And it just caused it to build up a lot of ice over here because there's really no major heaters over here. It could be a bad pan heater too. I'm not certain yet, I'll have to check. drain heater and it looks to me like it's working because it's keeping the drain clean we've just got us a lot of buildup over here this is uh, kind of just using your surroundings here and kind of figure out what's going on and if you look at it that ice is all over here you got a pressure switch it wasn't shutting off it kind of further confirms what I was thinking as far as it just wasn't shutting off when it was going through defrost. Fans shut off, but the compressor kept running. The heat offset it and uh, didn't freeze up. But over here, where there's no heaters hardly at all, that's where it just grew and grew and grew and grew until it finally tore itself apart. All right, three jugs of water and we finally got it. All right, got everything back reattached. Everything's taped back up here. Back here, since this was all tore up, put a screw here, went up to this frame, and then put a screw there, went into that. That's gonna be held to there. Move the thermostat back to here instead of there. That's on the suction line. Bulbs up. And then all the uh, defrost heaters, they're pretty, pretty decent. They ain't perfect, but uh, they ain't too bad. So, gotta go back up on the roof, verify our side glass is full, and then make sure she shuts off this time, doesn't just keep on running. Checking out condenser, it's a little dirty. I can see daylight now. You gotta look at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it's not too bad. I had to crawl in there. 
there, but it's green and it's solid. So I'm gonna let this run for a little bit, put it back into a pump down, and uh, make sure it shuts off. There we go. She shut off that time. And it's in the positive somewhere around a couple pounds. Came on about 25. Shuts off in a positive. About five pounds. She's not rising back up. And then when we pull it out, it went about 25, 28. About 27. So at 27, we're negative four. So we're all gonna be able to keep our uh, box temperature just fine. We're holding there, we're not rising up. You don't wanna rapid cycle it coming back and forth, back and forth. That's something to watch out for. So, and boom. So we're gonna go ahead and set our time of the day. I'm sure about four or something. Determination for the defrost works obviously because it uh, shut off before 40 minutes. And uh, that king valve, that cap is cracked and they've completely mangoided that uh, valve stem, which we'll mount, we'll uh, note that on the paperwork. I'm gonna say we'll grab our tools and get her put back together. A week later, I'm called back out because water is dripping from the ceiling. It's found that the insulation on the pipes was only one wrap thick of Armaflex tape. And while checking that out, I find that we had a refrigerant leak. We went from small to big on a vertical rise, which generally is a no-no. And then they used, looks like packing tape and wrapped that around the bulb. And they did at least use copper straps, but the uh, line above here is leaking. Uh, they get quick connects and uh, they use soft solder there, which in theory is probably fine, but chances are it's probably not stay bright or equivalent. It's probably just plumber solder. So I'm going to check that for leaks too because I know we got leaks up above. All right, something I just learned today this jab saw works really good for getting that insulation out. Anyhow, these are the fittings that were leaking. I had a coupling here, coupling here that I didn't see. You've got this there. So what I'm doing is isolating this away from the insulation. I don't want to set off no smoke alarms or anything like that. Um, and then I kind of went up a little higher so that I could chop out that coupling and put a new coupling in. That way I ain't got two couplings in there plus all this other garbage. Just unsweated it, wiped that silver snot out of there and uh, we're gonna rebraze that. We're going to put a uh, quarter inch Poured on the side of this thing so you can check your superheat inside here. That'll also give me a place to purge my nitrogen through as I finish brazing this thing up. Okay. I was able to run nitrogen right through there while it was uh, being brazed. That'll give us a place to uh, pull our vacuum and stuff for it. Okay, we've got our purge going on right now. Got our new pipe in there. I cleaned all that nasty plumber solder or whatever the heck they put in there. Got that completely out of it. Um, so now we're able to purge nitrogen through there. We've got the top on the half inch line. It's open, so it can vent on through. Got to put a magnet on the solenoid yet so that it can fully go through. We got her on purge there. Got everything wiped off and cooled off. Now we're going to go ahead and get that thing in up top. I had to pull it down from below. I'll have to go back up again. Got it down to here. Got my bulb attached. It's got good connection here. We don't have any gaps in between here. That will kill you. And you've got to use strap, preferably the copper or brass strap like they've got here. If you just tape it on, wire it on, wire tie it on, it does not work. I've had several problems with people doing stuff like that. It uh, looks like crap right now because of all the carbon. But like I said, I've got that bleeding down there. I'm gonna feed uh, expand a foam down here into the uh, hole and uh, put some tape down below to try to keep it from dripping down and get that completely sealed up. All right, we got her set on the uh, pressure test, which is 250 for this particular model. 
and we're filling her up right now. We'll be able to test my braze joint here, my two here, and then we'll go up above and check those. Not seeing anything bubbling. Got that uh, insulated and uh, got that expanded foam in there. You can tell that's not been changed anytime lately. I use channel locks on the uh, fittings. Okay, we're bogging out around 3,000 area. The oil looks horrible. So we're gonna do a quick oil change here. So here we go. that quick or what? I've got a spare one over here, but I don't like refilling that. That's just a lot of extra work. So. May have to do a triple evacuation. I mean, there's, it, it could also be the suction king valve on this, since it was mangoided, that it's leaking through, or even the uh, king valve on the high side could be leaking through. Um, we know it's not a leak. So chances are it's probably bleeding refrigerant through. I will later find out that the valves did leak and that allowed nitrogen into the refrigerant causing non-condensables. Okay, I valved it off just to see what it would do. Obviously it's rising, but it slowed down some. We'll just see whether it keeps on flying up or if it slows down. All right, we got this insulated, glued, and then put tape over it to hold it in place while it dries. It, uh, I'm not an insulator. And uh, we got a new drain fitting on here and this, this is about crazy. They've already drilled, drilled a hole through the wall. It's got very little to almost no slope at all, but uh, it's been like this for quite a few years. So there's not a whole lot you can do about it um, <clears throat> without drilling a new hole through the wall. So I put a new drain fitting in here, one that actually has a seal on it. The, this one was missing, so we had some water dripping out of that. And then uh, we're getting ready to just uh, wire tie my bulb up here and then get her running again. All right, this has been a roller coaster of a ride. We've got our port here so we can actually check our superheat. We've actually had to make a couple adjustments. And uh, when it's all said and done, we actually end up having to pull the charge because we had nine condensables in it. We end up taking the TXV apart and cleaning the two push rods that are inside there and then readjusting everything, weighing in new refrigerant. Everything is looking a lot better than what it did. It's got all new insulation all the way down to here, another piece starting here, split on the inside, glued, then added the duct tape to it to reinforce it. Still got a little bit of water left over from what's up above. Um, just need to trim that a little bit. For the most part, I think it's pretty, pretty sealed. I jammed it down inside there, working my way around it. But that should wrap this one up. Got a new uh, filter dryer there. Got the coil washed out. It was uh, impacted. And after, like I said, finding that the pressures were way higher than they should have been. And generally, you don't check your subcooling, but because I couldn't fill my sight glass as I was adding refrigerant, I had like a 30 some odd degree sub cooling. With all things considered, definitely uh, one of those things where you ran into one thing after another after another. Uh, the valve here, I told them about it. Literally, I tried squaring that up so I'd get the wrench on it. That didn't work. I had to use the good old uh, Kinepix there. And it's just, it needs replaced. But as long as it's working, that's all they cared about. So we're just going to give it a kiss goodnight and call it a day. Mm -hmm.